here and it has started and it is dramatic already. Norway's stunning scenery and rich wildlife is under threat from global climate change. And many young people here are angry that their own country is part of the problem. Suing the state and kind of attacking the problem in such a direct, massive way is a way of actually being able to make Norway take their responsibility. Norway is the biggest exporter of fossil fuels in Western Europe. I'm meeting the young activists taking on their government, trying to stop further drilling for oil and gas. In the northern tip of Norway, climate change campaigners have set up camp. They formed an arctic circle of solidarity to prevent the opening of a cobalt mine. They say it would do yet more damage to an environment already under severe threat. Ella Maria Hetta Essexson is one of Norway's biggest young stars, a winner of their X Factor style competition. I can see basically everyone in my generation and younger than me also being very concerned about the future and we are uh, feeling a lot of anxiety. I do believe that the climate crisis is definitely here and it has started and it is dramatic already. She's one of six young Norwegians asking European judges to rule that the government is violating their human rights by allowing more drilling for oil and gas. I really do believe that Norway has a big part of the yeah, responsibility of, to solve the climate crisis because we have been such a big oil producer. In Norway itself, you can see signs of climate change everywhere you look. Hotter conditions have attracted moths which decimate trees in their path. Warmer rivers mean unwanted species of salmon are thriving, threatening the native fish. And here in what they call the Norwegian Alps, the ice is melting, contributing to rising sea levels. In 1998, the glacier reached all the way back to here. But in just four years, it had retracted to where I'm standing now. And in the years that followed, the ice continued to melt. And you can see what's happened. So much has been lost in just 23 years. A landscape redrawn. At 83 years old, Karen Anna is the oldest reindeer herder in this part of the country. Her family from the indigenous Sami community have been here for 400 years, but today they're not having any luck tracking down the animals. It's an unusually hot day yet again. <laughs> Eventually, they spot that their reindeer have headed way up the mountainside to one of the few pockets of snow, a rare cool spot in a warming world. Norway is a country of contradictions. Most cars sold here are electric. The vast majority of domestic energy used is renewable, yet it's still the biggest oil and natural gas exporter in Western Europe. But six young activists are asking European judges in Strasbourg to stop further drilling in Norway. They're drilling for oil in the Arctic, farther north than ever before and in an area where no other countries are drilling uh, for oil. So we think that by complaining this to the European Court of Human Rights, we might have a chance to stop this catastrophic oil drilling. 23-year-old Mia Chamberlain has been trying to juggle her psychology degree with bringing the legal case. Personally, my story is kind of um, one built on the climate anxiety. I kind of have this overwhelming uh, fear for the future and a, a massive, well, both like sadness, deep sadness and anger towards having to grow up in a world that's, that's headed towards ecological collapse. Uh, and the only way to kind of stop feeling like this is to actually do something. Norway's Prime Minister for the last eight years defends the position. No, I don't believe we are on the wrong side of history. I think it's very important to understand that the Paris uh, Agreement bases on the fact that you should cut emissions where emissions 
are created. And it's not created because you are producing oil, it's created because you are using the oil. So what we have done on electric car, for example, is to increase the demand for uh, non-fossil fuel cars. We are working very hard to make, to be an example on how new technology can be developed. In fact, undermining our own biggest industries in that way. Many Norwegians, including Dad Kim and his family, rely on oil production for their livelihoods. He works on a rig as an electrician. If drilling stops, he's one of many who would fear for their future too. Probably my children is also going to work uh, at the same place uh, as I do. Uh, it's very important. We, we uh, don't have any other place to, to work. So if jobs were lost and companies were to close, what would that mean for you and your family, your community? It will be a ghost city with no, no industry and no uh, nothing. Maybe I have to move through to another place. This new generation of climate activists will have to convince a new Norwegian government to give up the addiction to oil. But both the biggest political parties are committed to drilling for now. Any ruling from European judges could be years away. So the campaigners say they'll keep on appealing to the world's conscience to protect the planet and their future.